Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. We're out just doing a short little walk today. We just did the um, Governor's Head Lookout walk that kind of goes, um, starts at the Murray's Beach car park and walks up to the end point. It's a really pretty walk if you're ever in the Jarvis Bay area and it's pretty easy. It's fairly accessible for most people. So I wanted to come out here and do a walk and I also wanted to film a little bit of a video for how I like to celebrate the autumn equinox. I really love the seasons, I love the change in seasons and I like the feelings that I get when different seasons change. I find my mood, um, my motivation really changes throughout the year um, and coming into autumn is actually one of my favorite times of the year. So I wanted to kind of document a little bit about what I like to do. It's nothing really kind of ritual and set in stone, but I just like to be mindful of the season change, how it makes me feel, and also so that I can be in tune with nature and my surroundings. So I'm going to include a few things that I like to do in this video. One of them is going on a bushwalk and observing nature, listening to nature um, and trying to understand the changes that are happening around me that signal that autumn is here and that winter is on its way. There's so many things that I like to do with the change of seasons and related to things that I grow in the garden and a big part of my gardening is connecting to nature hence why my channel is called The Nature Patch. And I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, and I would love to know if you do anything to celebrate the seasons changing or how you notice different changes in the seasons throughout the year. a little indecisive when I choose my favorite season of the year but autumn usually comes either first or second. In many parts of Australia particularly in the subtropics where I've done most of my gardening the cooler months of the year are the most productive. It's when the temperatures are bearable to be outside all day and the bug pressure is reduced so we can grow a variety of fruits and vegetables. But here on the south coast I'm truly noticing changes in the weather with different autumnal tones coming through each day and I'm excited to learn how nature signals to me that autumn is here and winter is on her way. I love the seasons and I love being in tune with nature. Change is the one constant that we can all expect. And I really enjoy feeling different emotions throughout the year as the seasons come and go. For me personally, I find there's always positive energy with each season change, in particularly the autumn equinox, which means that the day and the night are at equal length and marks the official start of autumn. Traditionally, many different cultures in both northern and southern hemispheres have celebrated pivotal moments in the astronomical year. Most celebrations are centered around enjoying and giving thanks for a plentiful harvest from the summer. Following this celebration, the nights become longer and the days shorter, which has been particularly pronounced now that daylight savings has ended here. 
This year, as we moved, I didn't have an abundant harvest to enjoy from my garden, but I still liked to celebrate it. And how I did this year was by making a pear cake. Making cakes, particularly European inspired cakes, connects me to my heritage. It really grounds me and reminds me that my ancestors had no choice but to live seasonally and to take each day as it comes. In the garden, this time of the year is a good time to plant onions as the days are still long enough for them to put on good growth before they slow down for winter. As you would have seen in one of my previous videos, I've planted uh, two varieties, a red and gold variety, and I'm trying to plant as many as I can because it's a crop that I know we do eat a lot of in our family. Autumn is also a great time to plant your snow peas and shelling peas along with your winter greens. I've planted an array of different greens in the garden such as blue dwarf kale, silver beet, pak choy, different collards, lettuce, so many great different food plants in the garden. If you're after some jobs to get done other than planting, it's a perfect time to prep some garden beds by adding fresh compost, making new no dig garden beds and adding different structures to your garden. I like to always be thinking of what native animals are up to at this time as well. For some, they're preparing for the time of the year when they conserve a lot of their energy. We don't have extreme temperatures in winter for most of Australia, so there aren't too many animals that actually hibernate, but I do like to keep in mind where habitat might be and make sure to leave it alone, especially if I can see openings that look very much like those of a bandicoot's home. As gardeners, whether we know it or not, we're in tune with the seasons, with the different plants that we select to grow. And while reading the packet on seed envelopes is usually the way to go to know when to plant, you can also look to nature to find signals for when to get seeds in the ground. One way to do this is to create a nature journal where each day, week or month, you document changes in your landscapes to build up your own personal timeline of the year. This is something that indigenous cultures have been building for hundreds of thousands of years. You can start by roughly planning out when you plant your key groups of plants in the garden, like brassicas for winter, tomatoes for summer, corn for late summer, etc., depending on your climate. Once you've done that, choose places in nature you visit regularly around these times when you would be planting your plants in the garden. This can be a walk you go on with your dog every day or your drive to work or further out in the forest. Start noticing what species are flowering, growing rapidly at these times of the year or shedding their leaves or bark and record it. You'll find that over time you'll start to expect certain animals um, and to see certain flowers and animals in your landscape and build up a really strong and special connection and relationship with your landscape. I'd love to know what do you notice in your landscape that signals autumn and the cooler months are coming. In many parts of the year, this is the changing or the falling of leaves on trees. But in Australia, we don't really have a lot of deciduous trees, but there are so many other signs in the Australian landscape that signal that the cooler months are on its way. The best thing about this is that there's no right or wrong answers. There are millions of microclimates in the world and each one changes independently to another, but still together. Building connections to our natural landscape is one of the best things that we can do for our personal and worldwide well-being. And the best thing we can do for our planet as a collective, which is to have empathy for trees and animals and our ecosystems, just as we do people. So I really hope you enjoyed this video today, all about one of my favorite seasons of the year. I love highlighting the change in seasons of the year, and I'd really like to start doing this to see the changes in my landscape throughout the year. I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next video, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.
Nobody is losing 